I am well aware, Monsieur Necker, that we have important matters to discuss. Your Majesty, soon we shall all go hunting with His Highness. for your rights. I envy him. Oh, to, to Versailles. Don't take the feet too hard, Camille. You did your best. Anyway, it's a good excuse. Leave Paris to come home to heat. Come on, Rabbit, done the way you like it. And a flan. Come back soon. To cover the rent you owe. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We must reject any accord with the Third Estate. We must continue to insist that all three orders sit separately. No. Not a single man in that room has an ounce of sympathy for what we are trying to achieve. That surprises you? And you? My position lies between the hammer and the anvil. Otherwise, I would have joined you already. Of course. If the king fails to understand their folly and make them understand it, he will be the loser. The abbot Sayers has the floor. Are we not the authentic voice of France? It is simple. We appeal once more to the nobles and the clergy to join with us. And if they still refuse, then they have forfeited their rights. And we, the third estate, constitute ourselves. In the name of the Almighty. Gentlemen, you are welcome. Therefore, we ask why a king who is loved by 28 million Frenchmen should surround the throne at such great expense with several thousand mercenaries, because that is what they are, paid for by the people of France to rob them of their rights. I. Marquis de Blackon demands that the provinces abandon of their own accord the privileges they have enjoyed for so long. I speak to you who come from Brittany. Do you willingly abandon your privileges? Yes! yes. And you from Artois? Yes! yes. Provence? Yes! Auvergne? Yes! You should have left with the others. I feel nothing but hatred and suspicion all around. I'm afraid for you. Madam, I shall not leave Versailles until you do. I cannot leave without the poor man. Then you must persuade him. 
Let's try. France. It was such a beautiful country. I've loved it so much. I wish it could have loved me. Millers are being bribed not to make bread and paid to hard wheat. Name. Give us their names. We are not informers. This is the assembly. These people are telling you the truth. It's the truth. Listen to these people. Listen to them. We want bread. All we want is bread. And send away... That treacherous regiment of Flanders. It is right. These women are doing our duty. Shall we bag them or desert them? Make up your minds. No. Yes, give them a hearing. Louis the Sixteenth has cravenly betrayed the revolution to Rome, and is no longer fit to be trusted by the people of France as a partner. In their struggle for freedom. Uh, huh. You're right, Mara. You must not soften now. Right, please. Still no sign. The villagers are getting suspicious. According to Monsieur de Bouillet, they should have been here by three. They must have changed their plan. We had better go. Forward! Holy God! I knew it, but, but, but I thought... This, this isn't possible. Bring you toast to the nation. Yeah, yeah. You won't veto that, will you? Uh, it's good wine. <laughs> Make way! Make way! friends, the ones uh, you allowed to put him back on the throne after the rain. Take care. Don't underestimate their strength. Big boy, time for bed. Leave your Uncle Maxime in peace. Oh, no, really, he's quite, um, well, fun. Aren't they babies, I mean?
God bless you. Thank you. I have some bad news. There's been a great French victory at Valmy. Oh, no. Yes. Courage, it's not over yet. But our salvation may not come as soon as we had hoped. for their transport myself in this field. I have served the revolution loyally, Monsieur Danton. For that reason, I feel obliged to speak my mind. What we are doing here is unworthy of our achievements. We have... Forgive me, General. You have liberated Belgium from the Austrians. It seems to me something we can be rightly proud of. We have nearly replaced one tyranny with another. Hardly, I would have thought, a great victory of principle. General Dumouriez, you call the rule of France a tyranny? Yes, if it means imposing upon the Belgian people a system of government they detest while helping ourselves to everything of value in their country. In past weeks, we declared war on England, Spain, Holland. Frankly, General, we are in need of this country's wealth. Perhaps we should have been more prudent about the number of enemies we chose to challenge at one time. The King's execution gave us no other choice. If we hadn't seized the initiative, they would have attacked us whatever time suited them best. At least we face defeat on our own terms. You, General, you face a charge of treason with a stunching calm. <laughs> Not yet. Not by a long way. And should the government challenge you, you will answer? Force? With principle, citizen. Interesting. Backed up by force, if necessary. Even more. Differently. I wish I knew what to do with you, General. Because if I don't think of something, I'll be accused of protecting you. And I see no reason why I should. At the moment, citizen, I'm the one who's protecting you from the thankful people of this liberated country. But I hear you have the same problem in many parts of France. Brittany and Vendée seem to think no more of your revolution than the Belgians do. I'm always better when I have time to think before I speak, as you may have noticed. Sometimes I think you should speak more from your heart. 
and think a little less. You do? Well, people listen to you, respect you, they're incorruptible. Oh, I don't think you need any advice. You and I have long known that Brissot and the Girondins are our enemies. The important thing is that we now have Danton's support because he sees that they are his enemies too. Now we can move against the whole cowardly pack of them. Good. Have you spoken with Danton? Soon. <laughs> May be seated. Your name, surnames, age, position, place of birth. My name is Marie Antoinette Lorraine d'Autriche. I'm 38 years old, and I am the widow of the King of France. <laughs> I was born in Vienna. My domicile, at the moment of my arrest, I was in the hall of the National Assembly. Clerk of the court, read the indictment. It is well known that like Messalina, Brunhilde, Fredegund, and Medici, all previously known as women of infamy, Marie Antoinette, widow of Louis Capet, has during her stay in France been a scourge and a vampire thirsty for the blood of the French people. It is no less well known that she has had political contacts with a man known under the name of King of Bohemian Hungary contrary to the national interests of France, and that in concert with the king's brothers and the infamous and execrable Calonne, she plundered the finances of France, that she sent millions to the emperor to aid him in prosecuting the war against the Republic, that she maintained a criminal correspondence with foreign powers. Hi, about time. Is it? Madam, 
Citizen. I'm thirsty. Might it be possible to have a glass of water? Yes, of course. Bring in the Austrian woman. I urge the public to remain as calm as possible. I would remind you that the law forbids any sign of approval or disapproval, and that whatever crime a person may have committed, the law must take its course impartially and with no undue influence. Remain standing. Antoinette, the jury, after due deliberation, has answered yes to all the questions which were put to it. I invite the public prosecutor to speak. I demand that the accused be sentenced to death. In conformity with Article 1 of the first section of the Penal Code, and in conformity with Article 11 of the first section of the second part of that same code. Eight in the morning. Won't be much longer now. Citizens, I need to change. Would you do me the kindness to step away? You know, we're not allowed to leave. We won't look. Children will be quite safe here with their nurse. It's no good, George. I've made up my mind. You made up her mind. <laughs> Thank God. Boy, Madame.
threatened us on every side. Who saved France from collapse? Danton! And now, 18 months later, he's not even allowed to answer the outrageous charges brought against him. And who brings these charges of treason and corruption? Those who, out of personal spite, would stop at nothing to see his downfall. Citizen, the question is not what individual acts of service to this republic a man may have performed, but what his life shows us of his dedication to its ideals. Let us then ask not what Danton did on one date or another, but how his life differs from that of Lafayette, Dumouriez, Brissot, Roybert, all rendered individual acts of service, even bravery, and all betrayed the revolution and were condemned by virtuous men as traitors. Wasn't Danton paid by the crown? Wasn't he the friend of the most corrupt of men? Didn't he constantly conspire against this country? Only the guilty seek to shield the guilty, hoping by so doing to hide their own crimes from the light of truth. Beware, citizen, that you do not, by shielding others, condemn yourselves. Your name, place of birth and position. Georges Jacques Danton. Born at Arcy. Attorney. Deputy in the National Convention. Your place of residence. My residence. There are those who would like it soon to be the grave. But I intend to disappoint them. The name of Robespierre and Saint-Just will stink throughout history! Must we not build this great republic on what is noblest and most godlike in mankind? Or shall we take the road of despair, forever to repeat the sins and evils of our weaker selves? We want names! Let my attackers prepare Get him off names! Death to the tyrant! Death to the tyrant! Death to the tyrant! Death to the tyrant! 